Hi there. In this video, we're going to look at the DC current gain of two small signal transistors. And these small signal transistors happen to be 2N3904s. This is a 2N3904 right here, made by Motorola. And this is a 2N3904 over here, made by Fairchild. This little switch allows me to switch between the two of them to do matching. And we're going to also look at the importance of matching transistors in, you know, certain circuits. So again, this is the DC or static current gain of a transistor. We can call it DC beta or static forward current transfer ratio. We can call it all sorts of different things. They have all sorts of different names. But, uh, you know, to keep it easy, we'll either call it DC current gain or DC beta or something like that. I guess it's whatever happens to stumble out of my mouth when I'm talking here. And... Um, I'll show you how to do this measurement. It's quite a bit easier than the uh, AC current gain measurement because we don't need to use delta in this. It's pretty much just a, a line, the graticule to the line, and away we go. Uh, this is a BNK501 for those that didn't watch the other video. This 501 is just a, a curve tracer that you can find on the market. Uh, they all have a different setup procedure, all ending up with the same result. But uh, some of them have different switches and some align a little bit differently. So I won't get into the alignment of this because the chances are you don't own a BNK501. And uh, it takes about five minutes to set this up. There's a bunch of switches on the back side and you have to undo, you know, the vertical and the horizontal coax and align dots on the screen in order to make the graticule read right. So as long as your uh, uh, curve tracer is hooked to an oscilloscope with a relatively accurate graticule vertically and horizontally, you'll get really good results with pretty much any curve tracer I would imagine as long as it's built properly and functioning right. So how this works again is on the horizontal axis down here you can see this line right here this is the floor okay and the floor just is zero is the zero line and this is the voltage from end to end so this is being zero volts here this is five volts and this is ten volts and that's adjusted by the sweep voltage here for testing different kinds of transistors and uh, you know in different circumstances we can move this along here so you can see the bottom line right now is touching the center graticule the center graticule is five volts and it really is it's just one volt per box along the bottom line now the vertical part of the graticule here is the collector current in milliamps okay so this line here being one milliamp this being two, this being three, this being four, and this being five. And uh, that's how that works up the side of the screen here. So we calculate that from uh, this side of the screen here up. Now the steps that you see are the base current steps. And the base current steps are set with this knob right here. And that's set to 10 microamps per step. So this is 10 microamps here, this being zero again, of course. So we got 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on up the screen. So it's very easy to calculate just with what we have right here on the screen. So we'll use the five volt mark because it's the center of the screen and we have some intersecting lines which make life pretty easy. So if we count up the screen, we get zero, one, two, three. So at this point we have 30 microamps of current, okay? And if we count the boxes up this side of the screen here, we've got one, two, three, four, five. So we know that it takes 30 microamps of base current to make 5 milliamps of collector current. Okay, because we counted the steps, right? We, the lines intersect right here. This here is 5 milliamps along this line here. And then this line is 30 microamps. This blue trace you see here is 30 microamps and that reflects the base current. So, as I said again, 30 microamps to create 5 milliamps of collector current. So in order to do the gain calculation, it's pretty simple, but again, we need to convert those microamps into milliamps. And 30 microamps converts to 0 0.03 milliamps. So all we do is we take 5 milliamps, so that's 5, divided by 0 0.03 milliamps, gives us a gain of 166.6. And that's the gain, DC current gain, of this small transistor right here. And that's at 5 volts. And that's how simple it is. So again, it's 5 milliamps. Count up here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we count the base current steps. This is 0, 10, 20, 30. So 30 microamps gives us a collector current of 5 milliamps. And then, of course, we have the math again. 5 milliamps divided by 0 0.03 gives us 166.3. And that's our HFE. Now, that's a small H 
a capital F and a capital E. And that stands for the uh, DC current gain or DC beta of this transistor. Now what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to this guy right over here, which is a Fairchild part, and we'll look at the difference. Now, wow, that's a really dramatic difference. Same part number, quite a dramatic difference. We can already tell that this guy over here has got a lot more gain. Okay. So again, we'll use the intersecting lines, and we really don't have, uh, at the 30 microamp mark, we re it really isn't intersecting. And how we do is we just use a percentage between the two lines to figure out roughly where that is, and I'll explain that right now. So we'll use the roughly around the 30 microamp mark, okay? So this is being zero again. So we go 10, 20, 30, right? Now, if we look between these two lines, we can comfortably say that, you know, this here would be 25, all right? And this being 30 because that's the step. So we'll say that this line on the graticule here, okay, is about 29. We'll call that... 29 microamps okay so we're going to mark that down on our piece of paper we've got 29 microamps at that point and if we count up the screen here on this side again same thing we got one two three four five six seven and that's about 7.2 there a little over that you know maybe 7.4 we'll call it 7.2 just to make it simple okay and we'll look it up here at the top of the screen here, right, because each one is one milliamp, so it's basically in twos per division. So we got two, four, six, eight, and then another milliamp. So we'll call it 7.2, at least from where I'm standing. So uh, <laughs> the uh, so now what we do is we write that down on our piece of paper. We have 7.2 milliamps of collector current, all right, for roughly 29 microamps of base current. Because, again, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 0.2, all right? And then if we count the steps here for the base current, we have 0, 10, 20, 30, and then, of course, we're using a ratio between the two. We'll call that 29 to this line here, okay? And we'll call it 29 microamps. So you take 7.2 milliamps divided by... 29 microamps, which we have to convert to milliamps again, so that's 0 0.029. So it's 7.2 divided by 0 0.029 gives us an HFE of 248.2. So we can see that the gain is much higher, and we can see that 29 microamps instead of 30 give us 7.2 milliamps of collector current. So it's pulling more current on the collector with, with uh, less current on the base. So we know that the gain is much higher, and of course we see that figure because we see 248.2 being our HFE. Now this is just a, an example of transistors. These are just two that I pulled out of my box. One happened to be a Motorola, one happened to be a Fairchild. And you'll see this kind of variation between the same manufacturer even. So you'll notice that matching transistors in power amplifiers and such can be very important, especially, you know, when they're all hooked up together and they want to, you know, pull different loads when they're supposed to, you know, pull even load with each other. So if you had these two, say these were big power amplifier transistors, this one here would be doing all the work and this one here would just be kind of lagging along and behind. So that's the importance of matching power transistors, these are just small signal ones, and that can even be important in some smaller circuits. Uh, a lot of the tech scopes and stuff, they had uh, special match transistors all over them, you know, small signal transistors. But these guys here, as you can see, are just vastly different. That's this part here again, and you know this is this part here again. So we're looking at the Fairchild part and the Motorola part. You can see that the Fairchild part has a much higher gain. So that explains how to look at the uh, uh, DC current gain of two small signal transistors. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you subscribe, you'll get automatic emails to tell you when I've posted up a brand new video. And that's about all you really get. They send you a little email and, uh, and tell you that uh, I'm posting more stuff. So you'll automatically know when I'm throwing new videos on. Hope you enjoyed. See you later.